is an increasingly difficult market. I think it's worth falling back on extremely well-run companies with stocks that have pulled back dramatically from their highs, even though the underlying business is totally domestic and is getting better and better. Companies like United Health Group, the best of breed health maintenance organization and insurance provider that withdrew from the Obamacare exchanges ages ago, it is a smart company. There's a stock that's down 13% from its January highs, and I think that could be a real opportunity. A decline of this magnitude for this high quality company is a rare thing indeed. Bye bye bye. Earlier today, we got a chance to sit down with David Wickman. He's the CEO of United Health Group. First on uh, Bad Money, of course. This was at CNBC's Healthy Returns Conference. Take a look. David, I am a member of United Healthcare. What am I getting that the other guys won't give me? A lot of things. All right, uh, tell me. Uh, I think you get uh, 285,000 people that are focused on uh, helping people live healthier lives and helping make the health system work better every day. Uh, they are uh, very passionate about uh, driving, uh, you know, restless servants, if you will, of change in healthcare broadly, and they hope to bring you a better healthcare experience every day. But what do I have to do to be a good patient? Because I know that you're, one of your mantras is, how do you get people to, to take better care of themselves, to live healthier lives? There's nothing in this that says I got to do a good job myself. Yeah, well, that's why we try to engage you as a consumer, and, and uh, engagement is a big part of what makes healthcare work well. Both engagement of the health system, but also engagement as you in managing your health conditions as well as keeping yourself well. You talk about the whole, one of the two holy grails as being the doctors, the network that you own. Uh, talk about engagement. You're able to get data from them. You're able to find out what outcomes are. I imagine it's the best way uh, to figure out what should go right in the healthcare system. That's right. Well, it's not just about getting the data from them. It's okay. about making the best use of the data that you have and converting it to information, applying it against the best known science, identifying gaps in care places where you can, uh, you know, treat. You know, change the way in which you access the health system and, and make yourself better. Okay, this you. last mile access, uh, you've got a business which I am fascinated by. I uh, hopefully don't have to use a uh, MedExpress. And right. in it, you say, uh, versus the emergency room, you're on record saying that MedExpress can do 90% of what an emergency room does at one tenth the cost. Why are you not in charge of our healthcare system? Well, MedExpress is a just one of the many. Uh, assets that we bring and you know as, as you realize pretty quickly the healthcare system is made up of a number of relationships and that's one of the strengths of our organization is managing millions of relationships with physicians as well as bringing our own innovations to the market. MedExpress is a is a strong company they get great uh, consumer response as well MPS over 70 right. and uh, you know just a, a, a well performing company. How is that test going with Paul Greens because they reported this morning and you know they have a lot of good things to say about actual healthcare. Yeah. Well, we have a pilot underway in 15 right. markets, Good. or 15 uh, stores, I should say, across several markets. And, you know, it's early stage right now. We're just coming up on the first year of the first uh, implementations but you of that. look at it? And... We look at it every, every, every month, look at it and evaluate it and discuss it with Stefano and others. And, you know, we do our best to, to uh, evaluate, you know, whether or not it will fit nicely into a forward-looking health system. Okay, uh, one of the things, I speak to a lot of health insurance executives, I speak to a lot of drugstore people and drug company people. Right. I am surprised uniformly that they are not afraid of the Death Star, that's Jeff Bezos, oh. and what he can do to health care. Uh, why is United Health not afraid, because I presume you're not, and why do I bet that in the end maybe they either turn to you, take your people perhaps as CEO, or realize that you can do a better job than they can? Well, we're operating our business in an expansive market that'll, you know, continue to expand over time, and we have a very strong uh, track record of growth and uh, expectations around growing in five critical areas around healthcare delivery, pharmacy care services, advancing uh, consumer-centric benefits, uh, really advancing also a digital and health information uh, aspects of our business as well as going global. And as I said before, there's millions of relationships you need to manage, and uh, obviously that would be just one that we would we would need to If, if I were Bezos, I like big data. That's right. how I predict what you want, right. the artificial intelligence. Right. Optum's got the biggest data bank in the world. Right. Why don't they just say, you know what, we can't reinvent this? Yeah, so data around 200 million 
people on the administrative side, and then another 100 million or so in terms of medical records. Uh, that is used by us for for AI, machine learning, you mm -hmm. know, advancing, you know, advanced technologies broadly in healthcare, and, and making a difference on, you know, the predictive values of understanding, uh, you know, who uh, may get sick and, and under what circumstances we need to. Uh, to, to help them with their care. Well, uh, speaking of, of that uh, kind of analysis, I had uh, Cygnus CEO on the other day, David Cordani, and yeah. uh, they're good, you know, these guys work closely with you. Uh, yes. uh, do you expect changes when they uh, finish their merger with Express Scripts? Uh, changes course. for your company. Oh, well, I think our company will continue to pursue the same growth opportunities overall. Cigna is a, is a very fine company and a good partner of ours in certain aspects of our business, and we look forward to continuing to work with them. There's no reason to think that you can't, right? It's That's not right. either or? No, it's not either or at all. Now, do you envision a day where healthcare won't be such a huge part of the GDP and won't be growing faster than the GDP? Uh, I can envision a day where that could happen. Yes, for sure. I think if you look forward to the future, you know, call it seven, eight, nine, ten years out, uh, I think you're going to see the uh, the real strong implications of technology on helping to curtail healthcare costs. I think the the systems of the benefits and the the health systems broadly going to more value-based uh, mechanisms will will drive greater efficiency and effectiveness in healthcare. Now we are up against a, a series of macro demographic trends with an aging population. Right. We have 86 percent of the Healthcare costs are driven by um, by uh, chronic disease, and right. that's not going to shift anytime soon. Well, uh, do you think that you can manage uh, drug prices? And I say that because this coupon initiative is one that I mean, I'm, I'm a customer, right? I want to know more about it because the one thing I know is that there are drugs that I really want, and the prices are too high. But I see in Canada and other places they got coupons. How do I? Are you in favor of it? Or are you going to help me do, actually get them? Well, drug prices are too high, and we work every day to bring uh, greater affordability for drugs uh, for consumers, like we did uh, announce a few weeks back, where we're bringing greater discounts at the point of service uh, for consumers. That's a big deal. A How deal. come it was? It you know, Jeff, Be Jeff Bezos is in the news every day about something that that nothing's been done. Right. This was something that I I was at Kohl's yesterday, and they talked about Kohl's cash. This is United Health cash. Yeah. Why aren't we talking about it more? Well, I think that it just, it, it may, you know, over time, I think it'll continue to get greater levels of attention. We saw yesterday that Aetna uh, also adopted right. a similar policy, and hopefully the rest of the industry finds its way to that same uh, position. Right. You talk about the need to have people think healthier, take better care of themselves. I'm a person who works really hard. Uh, are there people who are health risk because they take their job too seriously? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I think that uh, it's, it's a good stress reliever work. And do you encourage places, uh, if they can, I was up at salesforce.com's yeah, right, uh, right. New York headquarters. They've got mindfulness rooms. They have yoga rooms. Yes. If you wanted to lower, ultimately, your cost of health care, would you tell people, you know what, get be mindful, get those employees in one of those rooms. Is that a sensible thing to do? It, it is actually. You know, we have a, we've adopted or developed a mindfulness business as well. It's in a, it's more in a venture format as we sit here today. But venture form meaning that you meaning might spin that it out or yeah, no, that that we are. Um, it's an early stage okay. in, in its in its development and and uh, we're we're incubating and modifying the model. But but you know, stress relief is a an important factor in managing your health as well. And so many of those efforts make make a lot of sense. David, are we to the point where there are a lot of people who make fun. Like when I say that I'm trying to be mindful, people, are you kidding me? Mindfulness, that's something that's in San Francisco. Are there people who are starting to take care of their mind, not just their body, because their mind can produce better results for their body? That's right. In fact, mo most of, a lot of our engagement tools that we've just rolled out to seniors really uh, focus on engaging their mind. And because uh, you know, uh, loss of memory is, is something that we're, we're trying to manage. But it's important also, we, we apply mindfulness with uh, many of the cohorts of our employee base as well, uh, particularly uh, uh, you know, those that may uh, engage in, in more stress than others, like our nurses and others that are working every day to, to bring better health care to people. Okay, last thing I need to know. Okay. If I were President of the United States, which I am most certainly not, is certainly, well, whatever. Um, I would call you in and I would say, okay, here's the keys to the car. You have done a remarkable job. It's all yours. If it was all yours, what's the first thing you would do? 
Well, I think the first thing I do is a, there's about a trillion dollars of, of cost that's in the fee-for-service system today. It's largely unmanaged. Uh, there is no question we could do a better job with that in terms of just applying practical uh, private company practices uh, to that population and I think we'd save save a lot a lot there but I'd also have everybody get kind of get focused on a similar mission and drive a culture uh, to to improve health care costs uh, by lowering them uh, drive greater levels of, of uh, effectiveness overall and, and making sure that we are uh, driving a great deal of consumer but we don't want to put United Health out of business uh, no we wouldn't want to put United Health out of business I think though that we can and we can work together to make a, make a difference. Terrific. Okay, that's David Wickman. He is the CEO of United Health Group International, a stock that I've been recommending, believe it or not, since the 80s. And it's been a winner. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Yeah, you too. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.